Hi, what is mass measured in? Well, mass is measured in the kilogram. But particle physicists prefer something a little bit smaller, particularly when they're trying to compare different subatomic particles, and they use the electron volt per c squared. But nuclear physicists actually don't like either. They want to be able to compare different atoms and their nuclei. So they've come up with a definition for mass that is called the atomic mass unit, or the U for short. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing what the atomic mass unit is, how it compares to the kilogram and the electron volt per C squared, and how we can use that in studying nuclear reactions. So stay tuned. So the problem with using kilograms when we're studying atoms and comparing atom to atom is that the values are really small. So let's take oxygen 16. Well, the mass of the oxygen 16 atom is approximately 2.66 by 10 to the power of negative 26 kilograms, a really small number. If we then look at another common element, it's iron. And in this case, I'm gonna use iron 56. Now its mass is around 9.29 by 10 to the power of negative 26 kilograms. So as you can see, these numbers are really small and messy to deal with. So what we need is actually a unit that allows us to better compare these in terms of smaller numbers. In the beginning of the 20th century, it was decided that oxygen would be a good standard. That is, if you can measure experimentally the oxygen atom, then you can use that as our basis of an atomic mass unit. Now, this is really important. When you actually determine a standard for a certain measurement, such as the meter, such as the second, such as in this case, the mass, it has to be based on experimental technique. You can't just define it. You actually have to determine experimentally. And so since oxygen could be determined experimentally, it was decided that the AMU, the one atomic mass unit, was going to be equivalent basically to the mass of my oxygen divided by 16. Now, why 16? Because 16 is the number of neutrons that oxygen has. So as a result, you can determine a value for one AMU. But the problem became when they discovered other isotopes of oxygen. We don't have just oxygen 16, we have oxygen 17 and oxygen 18, and they're in our environment as well. So if you are wanting a standard, then you need to only have oxygen 16. But since there are different isotopes in various chemical compounds, then the, this standard becomes a problematic. So it was decided that instead of using oxygen here as our basis, it was decided that we would use the carbon atom. And now what we get is what we call the unified atomic mass unit. And as a result, it becomes one U, becomes basically the mass of my carbon, and specifically carbon 12, and we divide this by the number of nucleons, and as a result, that becomes one U. So in other words, the mass of carbon is now actually called 12 U. So what does one U actually become? Well, it becomes the value of 1.660539 by 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms. Now, that's not the precise number, that's just to seven significant digits. But that was determined experimentally by measuring the mass of the carbon and dividing it by 12. So as a result, this becomes our one atomic unit. What about our oxygen 16? Well, it now becomes 15.995U. What about our iron? It becomes 55.93U. So these are numbers that are much easier to work with. But before I go on, just a small point of caution. You'll find a number of old texts still referred to as the 1AMU, as opposed to the U. But the, the thing is, is that the AMU is actually referring to the atomic mass unit based on the oxygen atom, whereas the U, the unified atomic mass unit, is based on the carbon atom. Now, if you're dealing with smaller significant digits, there's not going to be a great difference here. But for correct terminology, you should actually be using the U because it is based on the carbon atom and that will give you the precise values that you need to use. So now we have three different versions of mass. We have our one atomic unit. That's equivalent to 1.6605 to five significant digits by 10 to the power of negative 27 kilogram. 
And it is also equivalent to if we use our electron volt per C squared, I made a video on that as well. So have a look at that. And that is equal to 931.5 to four significant digits mega electron volts per C squared. So there are three units of mass, one being the SI unit and two non-SI units that are used interchangeably when we're doing either particle physics or nuclear physics or both. So let's have a look at an example of a nuclear reaction where we can see the use of atomic mass units is going to be very useful. So let's look at alpha decay and I'm going to be looking at radium 198 and it's going to decay into polonium 194 with the release of an alpha particle which is often referred to as the helium nucleus. What we also need is their mass in atomic mass units. Radium is 197.999, polonium is 193.988, and the helium is 4.0026. Now, if you look very carefully, you'll see that the sum of the products is less than the total of the reactant of radium. That is, we are losing some energy here, and that energy is what is responsible for the kinetic energy of both the polonium and the helium nucleus as they fly apart during the alpha decay. Let's see if we can work that out. So the first thing we need to do is to work out what the mass defect is. And all we need to do is take this out 197.999 and subtract the sum of the two that we have before. Now when you calculate that out, you get 0.0084U. Now that is, of course is in atomic mass units. Now remember, our atomic mass unit is equivalent to 931 mega electrovolts per C squared. So what we can now do is say, okay, our mass equivalent is equal to 0 0.0084 multiplied by my 931.5 mega electron volts per C squared. When we calculate that out, we get 7.8246 mega electron volts per C squared. Remember, this is a unit for mass. But the nice thing is, is that if you want to convert how much energy that is, in terms of when through E equals MC squared, is we simply multiply this by C squared. Well, that's just dropping off my C squared. So the energy you end up getting is equal to 7.8246 mega electron volts. Now, you can, if you wish, you can convert that again into joules. And of course you do that by simply multiplying this by 1.602 by 10 to the power of negative 19, or you're gonna get a value of approximately 1.25 by 10 to the power of negative 12 joules. So as you can see, by using atomic mass units and the equivalents in, let's say, kilograms, or in this case, our mega electron volts per C squared, it becomes relatively straightforward to determine things such as the energy release due to, in this case, radioactive decay, but this can apply to other nuclear reactions as well, such as nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. Well, I hope that has helped you understand the basics of the atomic mass unit. Please like, share and subscribe, hit the bell so that you can get the latest updates. Put a comment down below if this has been particularly helpful for you. Please consider maybe supporting me via Patreon to help me continue to produce content to teach physics at a high school level. And if you can't afford a regular payment, maybe a one-off payment via my PayPal account. Again, the description has the information you need. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care. Bye for now.